So in February 1983, Kyle, a few of his friends, his son Yuri, his wife, and a couple other people, they are at a township meeting or a posse comitatus meeting in Medina. And this is, you know, just an hour or so to the southeast of here. And as they exit the meeting, Yuri remarks to him, he says, Dad, I see some guy sitting over in an unmarked pickup truck looking at us through binoculars. So Kyle and his son, Yuri, switch jackets and hat, presumably so his son will look like Kyle, just to see what happens, and they take off in two separate trucks. Now, a mile down from the road, or several miles up north from Medina, as they're heading back home, they are boxed in by unmarked trucks. You're going to have to stop both these vehicles. We're bringing up the rear. you got two station wagons coming at you. He was wearing blue and blue, blue jacket, blue pants. We're behind the second station wagon. We're just crossing the tracks. But as they were driving north out of Medina, the call party turned into this road leading to the Reardon family trailer home. As they attempted to turn around, Cheshire blocked their escape, and it was then the arrest attempt was made. I'm going to be showing some different clips of news stories and reenactments about the call shootout, but I believe that Altered Lives takes a pretty non-biased look at it. However, when you see these officers pulling and Paul pulling into this trailer park, understand that at a later date, some of the local Medina police officers actually came forward and said that there was an argument that ensued with them and the federal marshals beforehand because the marshals wanted to sort of push Paul into this trailer park so that he would feel apprehension about shooting at the marshals. They believed they would be shot at, and they were basically using families as human shields, something which, you know, is bad. And they try to swerve off into the road, and uh, they are now boxed in totally from the rear side as well. It's snowing, and Yuri jumps out of the truck. Already, all of the U.S. Marshals and several local police are out pointing rifles and guns, and one of them slams the butt of his rifle on the front of the car, which seems to be a sort of signal. Now, immediately, Yuri is shot. He is, and again, none of these officers have any kind of indicators that they're police, and they haven't apparently identified that they're police. He's shot. Now, he's dressed up like Gordon Call, his father. It seemed to be an indication, assassinate his father. He was wearing blue and blue, blue jacket, blue pants. We're behind the second station wagon. We're just crossing the tracks. Meanwhile, Muir and Schnabel eventually drove up to the scene when suddenly a shot was fired. Remember how Yuri Call said that one of the officers slammed the butt of his rifle into the hood of the car? This could have very easily been the first shot. They all knew who Gordon Call was, or they thought they did. They identified Yuri wrongly as Gordon, but they issued a description of what he was wearing over the radio on the way to him. They set up a roadblock and they made a loud gunshot noise, and this gave all the officers the excuse they needed to start shooting at whoever they thought was Gordon Call. Yuri immediately went down, but they started just shooting at everybody else. So, Kyle is fleeing, and uh, he makes it down after shooting. Uh, Yuri is dead, or Yuri is, they, they believe he's dead. He's lying in the snow. He's been shot in the side and in the gut, and he is immediately down for the count, and Yuri al already thinks his entire family is dead. And Kyle, it's believed might have shot two marshals, but the marshals could have shot each other because they surrounded the family. And as they were shooting, some of them got shot, possibly by their own fire. They were saying that the bullets were used by marshals, the ones that shot the other marshals. It was a mess because they surrounded the car and started laying into them. Kyle escaped and made his way down to Arkansas. And the story that follows is the one that leads me to believe that Kyle was tortured. The story officially is they found out that he was in this posse comitatus safe house in Arkansas. They go in, the family comes out, Kyle emerges behind a refrigerator, shoots a local police deputy in the gut. The deputy shoots him in the head. The deputy just manages to crawl outside and say, I got him, over the radio, and he dies.
I'm going to mix in some clips with this old made-for-TV movie, which is just outrageous even by the standards of what the police were saying. Because they were saying exactly what I'm saying in the video, that the cop shot him between the eyes and that Call shot the cop in the stomach and that he stumbled out and muttered his last words and then the SWAT team riddled the house with bullets. But the movie really strives to make him look like he goes out in a blaze of glory. And uh, by the way, I have kind of updated my stance. I don't believe he was tortured to death. I think this is too crazy of an assumption to make. Uh, I believe this is the view that is pushed by his son, Yuri. But I, I genuinely believe that they killed him and the sort of good old boys club attitude was, I'll just take his arms and feet and fish the bullet out of his head as kind of a souvenir. And that they disrespected the body and kind of just did away with it. Now, I don't believe this because the story has changed so many times. The autopsy shows Kyle was shot in the back of the head. The bullet came out the front. And then what happens after that? Apparently, they found out that the deputy that stumbled outside was riddled with buckshot. Now, as soon as he walked in there, the marshals, the FBI, the police, they were unloading their guns into the house. Thousands of shots. SWAT teams were there shooting into it. And then after the deputy stumbles out, they decide to burn the evidence. They dump gasoline down the chimney, they light it on fire, and the body is found in the morning. But what else is found but he's missing a foot and a meat cleaver mysteriously disappears from the scene. And they try digging his body up. It's now uh, under some water, but they try digging his body up to prove this. And of course, nobody ever picked that case up and found out whether or not they tortured him. But the story makes no sense. Why was he shot in the back of the head? It seems like he was tortured and assassinated and executed, but they burned all the evidence and this burning of evidence would happen again and again and again at Waco with Chris Dorner, with the Symbionese Liberation Army, which happened a, a few years prior to that, but it's a common MO.